Hello, and welcome to Love Anything Art. I have a fun little zebra-ish kind of stripey pattern for you today. I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to be using these two colors, and I can leave links below for you if you want to know the exact name of the colors. Just going to begin by cutting off a little chunk of each of those and then kind of working them and rolling them into balls. And while I do that, I do want to welcome everybody to my channel. So glad you are here today. I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you make this tutorial and I hope that you come back week after week for all the fun festivities I have for you. I don't know why I sounded like a leprechaun, but <laughs> anyway, if you are new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I do make videos and post once a week, every Tuesday, and I have over 200 videos. I'm getting close to 220 mark, which is exciting. One day I'll be able to say I have 500 and that will be awesome. But I hope you consider subscribing and hanging out for a while. I've rolled each of my balls into teardrop shapes and I'm going to make a two color Skinner blend. I picked these colors because I thought they looked fabulous together. <laughs> That's kind of how I pick colors sometimes. I just look through my box of colors and see what I have. And I like these two. And my pasta machine broke. I've said that in the last couple videos. And I'm going to get a new one eventually. I got to do some research here. The last one, the gears wore out on it. And apparently that is a thing for a lot of pasta machines. Is the gears malfunctioning. And they get little burrs on them. And it tears it up. If they would just put better quality gears on their pasta machines they would last forever just saying anyway so i have to do my skinner blend by hand it doesn't come out as beautiful as it does with a pasta machine so if you have a pasta machine i would totally recommend using that but i'm just going to make mine by hand and just kind of work on making sure i keep it as close together as possible it tends to get larger and larger wider wider as you make it by hand especially. So I'm just going to work that. And not too bad for doing it by hand. I have a nice little transition from one color to the next. I want to elongate my piece, going from the top to the bottom. And you're going to want this to be fairly thin. You can also stretch it out a little bit. I have made a little square of just regular white clay. And then I have my Skinner Blend. I'm going to place that on there. You want to make sure that you have the transition from one color to the next all on there. So you'll want to make sure that you have the entire color gradient. So when you cut out your piece, you have all of the colors in there. And not just like, oh, a little tip of the green or a little part of the pinky red color. And then cut away the excess around the white square of clay. You can set those aside. We will be using those. And you do want your Skinner Blend to be way thinner than your back color and that's so when we shave off using a stencil that we can actually get through that top layer and get to the back you want to use a roller and 
press pretty firmly and make sure you go up to down or top to bottom and not side to side. Again, you want all colors to be in the cutout when you cut it out. And you do want to press hard enough so that the clay comes up and through the stencil. This might require you to clean your roller a little bit between each roll. It does get kind of stuck to the roller, your clay does. Once you have it up and through the stencil, you'll just use the edge of the tissue blade and shave off all the way down to where it meets the stencil. And this is kind of where you can use your creative license and maybe you only want it to be kind of faded in. So that would require just not shaving off as much. Or you can shave all the way down so that all you can see around the stencil is the white. You won't see any of your color on top. As you'll see there at the top, more and more of the white's showing through. You can decide how much white or background color you want to show through. I'm gonna have most of mine showing through. I might have like a little sliver here and there on the rim around my pattern. As you'll see there, I left a little bit of the pink. But it's totally up to you how much you wanna shave off. And this is kind of fun just doing the little shaving, especially if you're not very good at shaving off. The stencil stops you from being too forceful and shaving off a whole bunch. And also these little slivers here would be perfect for projects. So you could save those if you wanted to for future projects. I'm gonna do a light burnishing on the top. And this is just to smooth everything out. So if you were a little bit too hard in some spots and softer in others, you can burnish it. And then I'm going to use my roller and I'm going to make the clay come up and through the stencil again. And this is just for effect. You don't have to do this. Be sure to clean your roller off in between rolls because the clay does stick to it. And since you have white clay or whatever color in the background, you don't want the other colors to stick to the color in the background. And you'll see there, my pattern does poke up a little bit. And also I have my gradient colors and you can see all of the green and all of the pink. I'm gonna use all of my scraps to make a background. You can use a solid color if you prefer to use a solid color, totally up to you. I'm just trying to use as much of my scraps as possible. Mix it as thoroughly as you would like. And I made this little cutout. You can do any shape you want. You can do a cutter if you have a cutter. And I'm gonna use this for my centerpiece to cut it out. But I just like making my own shapes with paper. It's not as effective or easy for some people as it would be just to use a cutter. So feel free at this point to just use a cutter but I'm just gonna kinda show you what I did with a piece of paper. And I'm leaving the center part a little bit domed. I want the sides to be a little bit thinner and the middle to be thicker. And you do wanna make sure that your piece of paper or your cutter fits the entirety of this background piece, so. Just want to make sure it's large enough. And then you'll take your Skinner Blend top and place that on top of that. Again, making sure that you have all of your colors in there.
then once you have it on there and make sure you don't have any air bubbles, you can go ahead and cut out your shape. I'm doing mine on a piece of paper. That way it doesn't stick and I can move it around a little bit more freely. Since I don't really have to be perfect about it, it is just a custom shape and no one will know any different if it's not exactly like the shape that I cut out, which is why I like it. And I'm cutting it just a little bit larger than the paper, that way I don't touch the paper and move it as I'm cutting. You can always shave and trim down once you got your basic shape cut out. And to smooth out the edges, I'm just taking my finger and lightly tapping and pressing down ever so gently along the entire outside rim. And then I'm going to decide where I want to put my circle. I did illustrate it on my piece of paper where I wanted it, so I'm gonna kinda just go with that. Basically, I'm going to just make a slight indent where I want it. And then I'm gonna use a baggie, and I'm going to finish cutting out. And that way the hole is domed and not so sharp around the edges. And it kind of folds the clay in in the middle. Now, using the baggie does put little creases in the clay. So if that bothers you and you don't like that, you can smooth them out after you're done. You can just use a tool, just using a little wooden dowel that I had and just kind of working it back and forth, rolling it on there. And no one's the wiser in the end. It looks fine, but like I said, if it doesn't bother you, you can leave those little wrinkles on there. I'm gonna put my metal finding here at the top. I am going to poke the hole in before I bake it. You can do this after if you have a drill tool. And I actually use the drill tool afterwards anyway, but I kind of want to see where it's gonna be and have the basic hole, so that way I can just drill it down and make it a little bit larger. Now, I did bake mine and then realized, you know what, I want a little bit more contrast. So as soon as it came out of the oven, I let it cool to where it's not burning my fingers as I'm touching it, but it's still warm. And I'm just taking the edge of my tissue blade and cutting lines in around the white. You can do this before, since you're watching this, you'll be able to see that. But it actually presses down on the clay just fine if you do it just when it's still slightly warm. You can still manipulate it and cut little grooves into it. I'm gonna add some black paint in these little grooves or holes that I'm making. This is gonna add a very sharp contrast and detail. And I think that this really made the piece. So I do recommend doing this and I would do it before you baked it, if at all possible. I'm using black because I really like that color and it shows up quite well against the clay. But if you have another color of paint that you wanna use, feel free to use that, whatever you wanna do. You'll just want to make sure you have a small enough paintbrush to where you can get down in that little crack that you made. So you can get plenty of paint down in there. I have a soapy sudsy little piece of cloth here. And I'm just going to wipe that over the top to remove all of that excess black paint. All right, and that is mine. I really, really like it now. It really, really made the piece. And I'm gonna resin. I'm gonna show you how I resin. I don't usually do that in my videos, but I just thought I would go ahead and show you kind of how I like to do it. So I'm gonna use a toothpick and a really small paintbrush. 
And what I do is I start with the sides. And I just go around all of the sides, putting my resin on there. Just to the very top, not quite over the top though. This is the UV resin that I use. And it came in a box of like 10 or 12. I had a whole bunch of them. They last a long time. I'll leave a link in the description box below. I kind of like the little containers better than the big bulky ones because the tops always get all messy and goopy anyway and I have to clean them so it just makes it to where I kind of use the bottle before it gets all goopy. And they're really easy to handle so I really like the smaller bottle as opposed to the big bottle. And I am going to put a very generous amount along the side. I don't want to just kind of be putting a super thin layer on there. I want it to be thick enough to where when I brush my paintbrush across there, it's actually pulling the globs of the resin across it. That way I don't end up with any air bubbles. I have plenty of liquid kind of flowing over the clay. And I do all sides before I put it under the UV light. I feel like this gives a more smooth and flawless connection and finish. So just go around all around the rim. Just showing you there. It's glossy, shiny, and kind of where I came up to the top and stopped. All right. And I have it all cured and ready to go. And now I am going to work on the back and then I work on the front. And I got a little lopsided piece here so you can use the toothpick to hold it. Now if you don't want to get any resin in the hole you made, you can put your toothpick in that hole and kind of hold it in place and that way you don't get any in there. Or if you have a drill tool, you can always drill it out when you're done resining. For this, for the top and bottom, you're going to need the domed little lid put back on there so you can just squirt some out all along the back. You don't want to put a whole bunch on the surface that you're working with. You want it to basically make a pretty thick layer around, but not enough to make it domed per se. You just want to put your very basic layer down. And then after that, you can add more UV resin to make it a little bit more domed. Because if you put a whole bunch on there at once, it tends to just go over the sides. You want to put enough on there that you can control the amount of liquid that's on there and it's not rolling all over the place. I've done that in the past and it got down all my hands. It was just a mess. So you'll see here, I have, I have enough to cover my space and give it a slight little dome to it, but nothing that's not unmanageable. And that is my back. I have resined and gotten that all cured. Now I'm gonna work on the center before I do the top. And for the center, I'm just gonna put a very thin -er layer of resin. You want it to be shiny. You want it to have enough in there to coat it but you don't want as much as you put on the back. It would be more so like you did on the sides. A little bit of a thinner layer, maybe even a little bit thinner than the sides. And that's because it's kind of a rounded surface, so if you don't resin it fast enough and get it cured, it'll kind of just start drooping. No one likes droopy resin. No one, no one. So just make sure you get it all in there. You can flip around, do the front to the back. And then now all that's left is to resin the top. And again, you can put the toothpick in the hole so you don't get any resin in there. Or you can use the drill tool when you are completely done. Again, just like the back, I'm gonna put a little bit less than I did on the back at first. So I can get my basic layer in there and then I'll go back and redome. 
You can hold it on the palm of your hand. You can put it on a flat work surface. You can just hold the sides between your hands, which is kind of more what I prefer. I'm not too worried about covering up that hole. And just take it easy and just kind of smear it all around. And then, now that everything is dried and ready, I'm going to go ahead and make my hole a little bit bigger. I do need it to fit my finding through there, so I do need the hole to be a little bit bigger anyway. And I'm making a very basic necklace here. It's just a pendant on a string or a piece of wire. And it's very simple. You just want to make sure that you have your finding wide enough there to be able to slip that over your piece. Mine's just about right. Then you can kind of pinch it together. You can perfect it and use your pliers and wires. Kind of manipulate it there and get it to close a little bit better. You don't want it to be too tight on there to where it doesn't wiggle around because if it doesn't wiggle then chances are when it's on your neck it's going to catch and it could rip or tear the clay or it wouldn't be pretty. You just want to make sure it's free flowing on there but not going to fall off. And then put your string or wire on there and voila! This is mine. I love it. I love the shininess and it brings out all of the colors and sparkles of the clay and I really like this background. You could flip this around and have the background as your necklace too. It's like a two-sided necklace. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe and join me next Tuesday for more fun. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!